Hello everyone. Welcome to the voiceover section of the tutorial for making this bottle opener. So as you will have seen in the beginning, we start with half inch rebar. Now I use rebar because uh, even unhardened uh, rebar can be a little bit stronger than mild steel, uh, especially in thin cross sections, which the little cap lifter on this does tend to be a little thin. So we start out by squaring off the bar, and we're not trying to chase out all of the uh, rebar indentations, all we're trying to do is create a square bar. You will still have some of the dents on the corners, that's fine, they will get dressed out in future segments. Once we have the square established, we're going to do a half on, half off, set down. And we're going to select about just over a cube of material. And that first blow is the most important. Establishing the shoulder and then allowing that shoulder to hold itself in place. Make sure to find the shoulder every time, because otherwise it will slip off and you'll create multiple shoulders. But then we want to draw it down to about a third of the width of the parent material. It will spread out a little bit, but we're going to deal with that in the next heat. In the next heat, we're going to lift our tong hand, material hand, and we're going to forge a slight taper, not a full taper, onto the end of the bar. And this is so that during our next step, when we taper the uh, nib using the angled face of the hammer, we will get it to spread out and be parallel in the edges rather than spreading out to be a big spoon shape. You could let it do that, but I prefer to have a nice parallel sided nib. And so we're using the lower heat here to planish out any of the rougher hammer marks or the, inf the forged in scale. And we can use that same low heat to just dress the edges. Given that this is rebar, or you could do this out of mild steel, it it's not going to hurt it to forge a little cold. So now that we have our finely tapered nib, we're going to use the edge of the anvil using a near side set down again in two sections. We're going to be doing a double sided set down. So we make one set down and then we make another one at 90 degrees. Now if you trade back and forth between these two and work not quickly but steadily, you can actually retain heat in that section and get this all done in one heat. If it takes you more than one, that's fine. But once you get down to close to cutoff, you want to go down all the way in one direction in line with the nib. Basically using the edge of the anvil as a hot cut. And this will allow you to then grab a set of tongs and a couple wiggles and the piece will pop off. Now this also sets us up with our reverse taper for the tail. If you were to clip this off with a hot cut or with an angle grinder, this segment would have to be done fully in tongs. Whereas given that the taper was already established, it's just a couple of taps and we're there. We want it to be parallel sided uh, at 90 degrees to the nib. In line with the nib, we want it to be tempered. And this is so that we can create our little tail that's going to be the keychain hook hole for the bottle opener. At this lower heat, we can use our hammer to dress out those dents and also round off the corners. Uh, should you be using something that doesn't have the ridges in it like rebar. Uh, rounding off the corners is just going to make the bottle opener more comfortable in the hand when you come to using it later on uh, as sharp edges are never comfortable. So now over the edge of the anvil, we're going to feed a little bit of the material over and we're going to brush it down. We're not forging it, so we're just brushing it down and then turning it over and forging it back towards ourselves. You want to tuck the tongs into your hip to resist the force of that tong coming back at you. 
And then we're just going to keep using the anvil, the edge of the anvil and the top of the anvil to form that eye into a nice round shape. Uh, we want to close this one off because this is where going to be where you'd thread your keychain through if you were going to wear it on that. And now with a good heat on it, we're going to pinch just behind the nib. If you pinch at the nib, you could shear it. And we're going to give it a twist. Now this is just for aesthetics. You could leave it without the twist. I sometimes make them with just my maker's mark. But uh, having the twist in there is just a little bit more interest visually. And it's pretty easy to do. I did it with a little shifter there. And you want to make sure that you're gripping it quite tightly with the shifter. Otherwise it'll just slip off and cause marking. And because you never get it straight... <laughs> Using a block of wood and a wooden mallet, you can just straighten it out without risking denting your twist. Which is never good for the finished product. And with a different set of tongs, we're just going to knock the nib over towards the step that we made earlier and curl it back around on itself. In this case, not closing it off because this is going to be the hook that grabs the bottle lip the cap lip that'll help lift it in the future. And just for aesthetics, we're going to brush it off with a block brush, take off all of those oxides, and this will leave a nice fine finish if you wanted to then uh, put a blacksmith's finish like linseed oil or beeswax, paste wax, and apply it at heat. That's This is a perfect opportunity to do so. If I feel it needs it, I might quench off the nib just to give it that little extra hardness, uh, given that this is rebar, and I know that this rebar is mildly hardenable. But in this case, I didn't think it was necessary. The nib is thick and strong enough to do it on its own. And there you go. Two bottle openers made. These are a really quick, really easy project for the beginner or the experienced person. I like to make them as often as I can. It takes me like five heats to make one of these, six heats maybe, and uh, it's good practice for various techniques, it's good practice uh, for hammer eye control, and it's just good practice for muscle memory. If you're interested in more content like this, then please feel free to hit the playlists in my channel, uh, or hit that subscribe button to be notified of when I upload new videos, make sure to hit that bell notification icon because I will be uploading more educational content just like this. If you want to support the channel, you can join the list of wonderful people that you see on the screen before you on my Patreon, who get access to behind the scenes videos and access to these videos 24 hours in advance of when they get uploaded. With that being said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. See you next time.